In today's video, we're going to check out some creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. So you're telling me that they have a sun simulator in the sky right now. And they're able to generate man-made northern lights. You think they can't fake Jesus coming back too? Or an alien invasion? Or an asteroid? Whatever comes next, whatever they've got planned, whatever their next big move is, do not comply. Please excuse me if I seem a little nasally or droopy or something. I'm really sick. I'm fighting some kind of congestion in my throat. So please forgive me if I just seem a little loopy or something because I'm definitely sick. Watching this video, it's got me thinking, what if the government and all of the news media and everything is feeding us all of this information of the artificial sun, producing northern lights with radio waves? What if all of this is to make us think that if something major happens, like the second coming of Christ, what if their plan is to create so many things that's just so fake, so hard to believe, that when the second coming of Christ actually happens, we do not believe it? And the overall goal is they could have been trying to fool us this whole time with all these little things that they've implemented into our world to make us not believe when something like that actually happens and it makes us the bad guys to the good guys, if that makes any sense. Let me know in the comments on what you think about this. Her is here, and that's not an exaggeration. OpenAI's new voice model that you can interact with is insane. This is the demo that I think best encapsulates it. Just listen to these emotions and reactions. It's, honestly, it's weird. I'm gonna be interviewing at OpenAI. Have you heard of them? OpenAI, huh? Sounds vaguely familiar. <laughs> Kidding, of course. <laughs> That's incredible, Rocky. What kind of interview? Well, it's for a software engineering role, but I just need to know, do I look presentable, professional? Well, Rocky, <laughs> you definitely have the I've been coding all night look down, which could actually work in your favor. Maybe just run a hand through your hair or lean into the mad genius vibe. Your enthusiasm is what's really going to shine through. I don't have a lot of time, so I'm just going to throw this on. What do you think? <laughs> oh, Rocky, that's quite a statement piece. I have recently seen a bunch of these chat GPT videos coming to light of their new model. And I got to say, that is disturbing in a way. The AI model sounds almost as if it's flirtatious in a way, and that's kind of creepy. And I mean, don't get me wrong, there's probably some people out there that are really gonna like that a lot, but to me, that just sounds like I couldn't trust it. I think there's someone on the other side of the screen watching me through a camera system and just pretending to be a robot. That sounds way too lifelike. But it had a hint of artificialness to it. We're heading into some crazy times. But I'm not gonna lie, things like that I kind of find interesting. There is some people that really need service like this. Like if you're someone that is blind, you will no longer have to have someone and pay for someone to help you see where you could have an artificial intelligent pair of glasses hooked up to this kind of system that can basically tell you everything that's around you so you can see with a virtual set of eyes. I could see a big one up with that. But overall for just a standard user, I don't know if that's really necessary. You guys see this picture? Yeah, we see it. What's up with yeah. that? These are called witches stairs. Witches? Witches. Why? Okay. So there's an Santa? account. History is cool. This is what they said about it. It is believed the design was thought to confuse or trap witches, preventing them from easily climbing the stairs due to the staggered pattern. That's like the witches easily just look at the stairs and like, I'm just going to walk up these stairs. It's like when people say you have to like zigzag with alligators. <laughs> yeah, oh, no. Oh like, man, I got to think about it. It's like, who told you that? The alligator? Because you can <laughs> easily just come get you quicker. Witch or not. Those stairs, I would definitely trip over. Oh, for sure. And then they would, yeah. they would, hundred percent. Like, You're a witch. <laughs> he hangs a burner. I'm like these stairs are confusing, man. Do you know how hard this is. What is this? I'm not gonna lie. I really like the way those stairs look, but I would probably have a hard time going up and down them myself. And heaven forbids, if you trip and fall, that's going to be an extremely painful fall down. It's already bad enough falling down normal steps. Imagine falling down something like that. Why is the Vatican holding a press conference? This Thursday, they haven't had one of these since 1978. 
If you want to like what's going on, <laughs> I'm going to break this shit down. Let's get into the article. Vatican is preparing guidelines for apparitions and other supernatural phenomena. The Vatican is preparing to release a document giving guidance on how to discern supernatural phenomena. The Holy See Press announced the upcoming document will be published May 17th with a live stream press conference. It say that they're in the process of finalizing a new text with clear guidelines and norms for the discernment of apparitions and other phenomena. Hold up, it's more. Let's break down what the Vatican meaning of apparition. An apparition refers to an instant in which a divine entity such as a saint, the Virgin Mary, or Christ himself makes itself known to a person on earth. So what is it that they don't want us to see that they think that it'll discern us from the supernatural and or a phenomena? You remember the motherfuckers opened up CERN the day of the eclipse, which is we figured out that that wasn't even really no real eclipse. Y'all remember all of that shit? They opened up CERN and then they put out the article saying if you start seeing people who look different to you now, you got this certain disease and shit. Now, nah, don't start making up no diseases. We know what the fuck really going on. Now y'all trying to discern some shit from a supernatural and a phenomenal. Now, it's something I heard that they don't want us to see. It's something out this motherfucker because y'all remember the Mandela effect? Yeah, it's something out this motherfucker they don't want us to see. Don't want us to witness. Don't want us to know because you know that this year is the year of the truth. The year of the karma. The year of the divine. You feel me? But hey, y'all tell me what y'all think about all the shenanigans in the comment section. Like, follow, and share <clears throat> for more content. I mean, this kind of leads back to the first clip we just watched in this video. I do kind of think that maybe something is about to happen biblically and they want us to not believe in it. So if we get approached by a holy entity, they are basically wanting us to not believe what that entity says. But now it's like, well, what if you do get approached and you do believe it to be some kind of holy spirit? But now there's this off chance in the back of your head that it could potentially be a demon. I'm curious to see the outcome of this to see what the future development of this release is maybe nothing will come of it but it is odd that they're getting stuff around to basically warn people about certain anomalies if you will so only in due time we will see i have a feeling maybe if not this year next year there's going to be a lot of people that are claiming to see the demon face and i have a feeling there's going to be a lot of people that are receiving more active downloads and what I mean by that is they're going to be saying that they are being contacted by other beings and they're talking through them. I just have a really sneaky suspicion that that's going to happen a lot either at the end of this year or sometime earlier to mid next year. So stick around and let's see if that happens because just something's telling me it will. Beneath the surface of the moon, 30 meters deep, there's structures that they can't explain. Looks like gigantic steel beams. What are those doing there? You know uh, the history of the moon as well when when they crashed um, one of the uh, capsules into the moon, it rang like a bell for hours, you know, f meaning it's hollow. Mm. So there's something going on with the moon, something really suspicious. And one last thing before we go around it, when you talk about the, the one of the missions that went to orbit the moon, I think it was Apollo 10, they were seeing if they can just complete an orbit and come back to Earth first before they landed. When they got to the back side of the moon, which we call the dark side, the comms are off naturally because you, the moon is blocking comms from Earth. But... But when the comms went down, somebody hacked the comms was playing this music, which I thought was, they, they said it was kind of like spiritual music. And you can listen to the black box audio. All the astronauts in the capsule panicked and said, who's that? Where's that? Where's that sound coming? Where's that music coming from? They panicked and it played until they got right back around into comms range again. And then the comms connected back to Houston. Wow. Yeah. So there could be life on the dark side of the moon. I believe so. Now, to me, I've always theorized that there's probably something on the dark side of the moon that either governments are trying to hide from us or other extraterrestrial life is hiding from us so that we cannot see it because that would be one of the best places in the world to hide is a place that never faces us. I could definitely see some form of life being on the moon, especially if it's trying to stay hidden and it's on the dark side of the moon. Now, if that's aliens or humans, that I do not know yet. 
I'm leaning more on the side. I believe that humans are up there and they, they're doing work, like construction work, probably building warehouses and things like that. Another reason why they want to make a time zone for the moon, because there's probably other countries that are still operating their business time as if it were their country's time zone. And that's probably really interfering with a lot of people's workflow up on the moon. Crazy theory, I know, but I really feel like it's true. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this almost every day even on days when I'm sick <laughs> and to everyone that's subscribed and or watching thank you so much for being subscribed and thank you so much for watching how many of you have seen this before you, you know like when you go to your doctor's office and they say just sign here do any of you stop and say what am I signing for I had done that in the past and usually oh you're just giving the doctor consent to see you and of course I would trust them right but not anymore because I don't use this system I would have to be on my deathbed and wanted to be saved. But anyway, the point is, have them print it out, read it. This is what happened to my girlfriend a month ago. She finally decided, you know what? I'm not signing that electrical thing anymore. I want to know what it says because it's a contract. You're putting your signature down. And the fact that they need your signature means they need you to consent. It took them a while to print this out because it was like six pages and I guess nobody had ever asked them to print it before so they didn't know how to use the system to do that. But once they got it printed out and she sat and read through it, you know what was at the end of it? You consent for your doctor to give you. So know what you're signing. And this is not legal advice, but when you're going through a contract, you know you, you can't put a line through things. You can draw a line right through it and say, well, I agree to all this, but I don't agree to that. Put a line through it and sign it if you have to. Now, at the end of her appointment, she didn't sign it. She told them that, I don't consent to that. And, of course, they still want your money. They still want to collect the insurance uh, payment. So they saw her anyway. No is the most underused word in our vocabulary. Now, I remember when I used to be a people pleaser, and it wasn't until I had read the book Boundaries. We need boundaries, people. And I started practicing saying no. So if you're someone who has a problem saying no, just start out small. A girlfriend called me up, and she invited me to one of those tea light parties, you know, when that was all the fad. And I didn't really want to go. And so I wasn't being genuine if I were to tell her, yeah, I'll come to your party. So I said, no. Now, mind you, I'd never said no to her before, and so she was taken back in shock, and I think her feelings were hurt, but your feelings aren't my responsibility. I needed to set a boundary and say no. So if you're somebody who has trouble saying no, just start practicing with little things. Be genuine to yourself. If you don't want to go somewhere, don't go there. If you don't want to do something, don't do it. Learn to exercise the power of no, and here is a great place to start. Stop consenting to things when you don't know what you're consenting to. I, I couldn't agree more. And if anyone knows me when it comes to terms and conditions, I read through those bad boys. It, it's a little annoying because like if I'm in a public place, like when I got my vehicle, for example, I read through all of those terms and conditions for a good 45 minutes to an hour just reading through the terms and conditions, letting the dealership know what I either agreed with or didn't agree with. And as far as saying no, definitely set your boundaries. You should never feel obligated to say yes to everything or anything. But you can definitely easily say no and not burden your life choices to evolve around someone else's. I'm a big believer in that. And all of my friends that know me personally, I will clearly tell you, no thank you, I'm not interested. And I do find it a little odd that some people out there have a really hard time saying no. That kind of blows my mind a little bit as if it's like gonna end the world, you know? It's, it's not gonna be the end of the world even if you hurt someone's feelings by saying no. So if you're someone that struggles with saying no on opportunities where you probably should say no, just try to remember this video, this clip, and put your foot down and just be like, hey, I'm not interested, or just say no and be on your way. So let me know in the comments, do any of you have a problem with saying no in certain situations where no would have been the best option? Yo, this is so strange. Urbex Hill is an urban explorer that regularly documents his explorations. And in this particular video, he is documenting an exploration in an abandoned tunnel in Point Pleasant, West Virginia. And Point Pleasant, West Virginia, just so happens to be the home of the infamous cryptid, the Mothman. Now in this video, Chris is exploring these tunnels and he catches a few strange sounds throughout the whole thing. But right here, he captures something absolutely terrifying. Just watch. 
Did you see it? Chris said at the time he was just filming, he did not see this. He said there was so much mist and stuff coming from the water that was flowing that he couldn't even see his camera. But he captures two sets of eyes peeking around the corner of this tunnel. And if you zoom in, you can actually kind of see the forearm of whatever this thing is stepping out. Did he just capture the Mothman on camera? What do you think? I remember when I used to live in Virginia, that was the big topic was the Mothman. I remember always looking out for the Mothman. You were supposed to be able to tell by its big glowing red eyes. Very interesting cryptid. Is there anyone watching that's in Virginia that actually has seen a sighting or two? Let me know in the comments because I find it pretty interesting. I think it's more interesting than Bigfoot personally. Does nobody else think that this new painted portrait of King Charles is sketchy as fuck? I mean, look at this demonic ass painting, dude. I'm about to show you something about King Charles himself that's really sketchy that'll really make you question the royal family. But like, does nobody remember what happened to Princess Diana? I mean, does nobody know about the controversy behind this man or the queen herself? Let's have a conversation about the Congo. Do you know how many sketchy individuals throughout history have been knighted by the queen herself? Like Mr. Lucian Grange himself? You know, the CEO of UMG who's been accused of financing Diddy's parties? But people, King Charles is quite literally the descendant of none other than Vlad the Impaler, aka Mr. Dracula himself. That should be considered a sketchy in itself. Supposedly, the painter said that the butterfly by the king's shoulder symbolizes the beauty of nature and highlights the king's environmental causes. <laughs> environmental causes? This is the same exact painter that painted Tony Blair and Sir David Attenborough. Both sketchy ass people. Supposedly, Queen Camilla is said to have looked at the painting and told Yayo, yes, you've got him. <laughs> yeah, somebody's got him. Or the fact that Yayo made a joke saying in quotations, if this was seen as treasonous, I could literally pay for it with my head, which would be an appropriate way for a portrait painter to die? To what? People really need to get in touch with reality, man. And then start to realize that some of these bloodlines today quite literally existed hundreds of years ago. <laughs> yeah, that painting is a little off. I'm not gonna lie, I really actually kinda like it. I think it looks really neat. It, it just looks so menacing and sinister in a way. You gotta be honest, it looks good. Like the detail of the face and the suit and everything is really nice. It's just disturbingly red and smeared around. It, it almost looks evil. And I don't know if it's true or not, but I didn't know that they were actually descendants from Vlad the Impaler. That's a new one to me. Hold on, let me do a quick Google search just to confirm if that's true or not. Wow, doing a quick Google search, it is confirmed that this individual is actually related to Vlad the Impaler. He's his 16th generation grandchild. That was really interesting news to me. It does make you wonder, you know, all of these old royal families or people of fame in this world, do we really know who they tied to back in the past? Let me know in the comments. What do you guys think of this painting? Did you know that he was a descendant of Vlad the Impaler? Because I did not. That was a new one to me. How come no one talks about how insane it is that from a very young age, we are all conditioned to work 9 to 5, Monday through Friday, for 40 to 50 years and trade all of that for like, I don't know, 10, 15, maybe 20 years of freedom once you're too old to actually enjoy it? Like you really look around every day during that commute at all the other people doing the same thing and just go, yep, this is how it should be. This is normal. How come no one questions that trade-off? 40 to 50 years of sacrifice and youthful dreams all gone just so that you can get what again like i said 15 years of elderly freedom and retirement i mean i questioned it and i escaped it but almost no one i know has ever attempted or even tried to question that everyone just conforms they just accept that yep this is how it is we don't got a choice like how are you not looking at the fact that you have to ask permission from another human to take a vacation that you have absolutely no control over your pay you just have to hope your boss gives you one like how are you guys taking all of that plus that trade-off i mentioned and not freaking out about it not getting extremely pissed off like when are you all gonna wake up when are you all gonna actually think about the situation and go oh this doesn't make sense this this isn't right it's only a matter of time before people start realizing and they start waking up to the potential of why am i educating myself to work for someone else and i have a feeling that's going to start happening soon especially with the power of social media we are starting to see such a spike of people being able to be creative and doing their own things as entrepreneurs basically because of social media and I find that extremely amazing and a great opportunity. That's why if anyone's ever been interested in doing social media, I always push them to do it. It can financially benefit you in the long run. Sorry, I know it's extremely rambly, kind of like 
lightheaded and I'm just all over the place. But when I see videos like this, I definitely know that we're going to be on the movement of our own success. And that excites me because there is people out there that are waking up to the realization that why am I working for someone else when I should be working for myself? So let me know in the comments, is this something that you're interested in? Are you curious about working for yourself? Are you tired of working for someone else? Or are you happy at your job and you're really comfortable with it? And there's nothing wrong with that either. But the option of being able to work for oneself is always out there. We just need to know how to do it a little bit more efficiently for ourselves. Remember I talked about the giants of South America. The Aztecs talked about before the Aztecs were there, giants roamed the land. These giants were created by a god, but they opposed another god. There's three times this god tried to kill all the giants. One of the first times that he tried to kill them was by sending fire from the sky. It killed Wow. almost everything but a few giants survived and then they say that this god ended up flooding the whole earth they killed these giants there was one giant he survived with his siblings what they did right after that flood was they're like we're gonna build a giant pyramid so if it ever floods again we can escape it mm -hmm. and so this pyramid that they built was called the great pyramid of Cholula the largest pyramid on earth volume wise they said it's one of six pyramids that were built on top of each other we're talking a massive massive yeah Tower of Babel like thing. Yeah. Tower of Babel happened after the flood and these giants built this pyramid to escape the flood after the flood. That's an interesting theory. I dig yeah. that, dude. That's they just found what under the pyramids? Nah. Nah. So scientists have discovered an unknown structure under the pyramids of Giza. They're saying this is a huge breakthrough because it's not just any old structure. It's a bit weirder than that. So I'm sure we all know about the pyramids and you probably know about all the theories and also how they're, you know, lined up perfectly to the stars right on the center of the earth. You know, it's just like all of these weird things. It's just there's some weird stuff going on there, right? But the main thing I do need to touch on is the theory that maybe the ancient civilizations in Egypt were far more advanced than we did think. I mean, if you look at hieroglyphics, you can literally see certain things where they are depicting lights and other types of technology which clearly weren't around that long ago right so it's a big theory many people believe they were far more advanced than even us today so just think about that while i cover this so recently a study was done in egypt as they're constantly you know evaluating and seeing what's going on there and the findings were published only two or three days ago so located ten and a half feet below the sand in the desert they discovered this structure which roughly measures 33 by 49 feet in how big its diameter is right now this was in an almost l shape and as we know the pyramids rise from the ground so this structure was going into the ground but it gets way crazier than that because it doesn't stop at that structure beneath where the structure ends it's estimated there is a 30 to 50 foot drop and this is where it gets mad with an extremely high electrical voltage and anomaly like this is getting messed up now like what what is this now from the top of where this structure is it's just the normal desert there's no remains nothing they've looked at this place before and there's literally nothing and an underground investigation hasn't been carried out here before so they need to see if they can do it the archaeology just there said we believe the continuity of the shallow structure and the deep large structure is very important considering the electrical currency that is down there as well but they said however this won't be revealed until further research has been carried out so we don't know anything yet all we know is there's a structure buried next to the pyramid under the ground and there's some kind of electrical thing down there so yeah absolutely brilliant i don't know what this is going to be but this could get wild so make sure you hit that follow button and i'll keep you updated hey that's pretty interesting i know a lot of people say that there's rivers of mercury underneath the pyramid Maybe that's where the pool was held for the mercury. I bet there's some mind-blowing things held deep underneath the pyramids, and I'm talking about deeper than anybody probably imagines, hundreds of feet. You know, in the New Testament, the Bible says, Jesus says this. He says, honor your slave master as you would honor me. Honor your slave master as you would honor me. Jesus is condoning slavery in the New Testament. You see, that's garbage. You could tell that's a remix. Somebody said, you know what? Let me add this little piece in here because I got to keep these slaves under check. Let me add this in here. We're going to print this because, you know, back in the time of the Torah. Yeah, they had they like to have them house slaves in the New Testament. The Bible tells you again, Jesus speaking to a slave master about beating the slave. And he's telling the slave master, don't beat him too bad. You don't want to kill him. Just beat him to within like an inch of his life. Because, you know, we need them to keep continue to do the work. Well, you don't want to kill them. We're going to punish you if you kill the slave. You can beat them, but don't kill them. How come they're not teaching that in Bible study every single Sunday or Wednesday night, whenever they go? How come they're not doing that? You didn't know about that either, did you? You see? 
Foolishness. I did not know that that was in the Bible. Give me one second. I want to look this up. You can look this up. Just type in the same line that he used and Google will pull up the reference that's in the Bible that resembles it, but it's totally different. It's not exactly what he said. So it's not a hundred percent true, but it is referencing a slave to respect its master as if you were to respect Christ. So it is in the Bible, just not the way he said it. It does make me wonder if the Bible has been manipulated to keep certain people controlled to the narrative because they don't want to disrespect God or Jesus. So if you have someone in higher power to manipulate manipulate a book, would they not manipulate these books to keep certain people under control? And if they're doing that, then what is a lie and what is the truth in these Bibles? Now, I played a video yesterday about an individual talking about the Bible and how it's been altered to the point where it's not even the real Bible anymore. And there's quite a bit of people in the comments talking about how wrong that person was. And I didn't really do any deep research into what he was saying and I didn't really do any deep research into what the people were saying he was wrong about in the comments but a lot of people were claiming that what he was talking about was completely false and there was some people that were saying you know he's completely correct and it's a really touchy subject because it's hard to tell I do not want to say that the Bible is full of lies because it's such a highly praised resource but what if we are brainwashed into thinking that that resource is its most authentic version it can be. And in reality, it's completely falsified and turned 180 from what its truth really is. Let me know in the comments on your thoughts about this. Leave a comment letting me know if there is a specific Bible that you truly believe in or do you just stick to old Bibles or are you okay with new Bibles? Let me know in the comments. Did anybody else wake up today slightly excited at the slim chance or possibility that today was going to be like the end of the fucking world with all the solar eclipse talk that's been going on nonstop? I woke up this morning and was like, you know what? It could be a great day because it could all end um, and then I wouldn't have to work anymore. I know that's really freaking sad to think of. It's not that like I want to die or anything, but... I just, I'm just, well, one, just freaking tired of the same rat race, like, over and over again, and anything that can happen to change, like, the current situation that's going on for all of us would be fantastic. Um, unfortunately, although, I, you know, I don't think anything is going to happen. It's been uh, kind of just nice out. <laughs> but yeah, you know it's sad when you are, like, waking up excited, looking forward to there being some kind of incident that is going to change your life like in the positive. And obviously I don't want some crazy attack or something like that to happen. I'm just talking about like a, a shift in policy maybe, or just if that's gonna help some people out. Just for shiggles, let's talk about how the Vatican is hiding a time traveling device from us. It's called a chronovisor, and it was developed in the 1960s by this gentleman in the middle, Father Ernetti, and these two other guys who ended up working for NASA. This guy over here just happened to be a Nazi before he went to NASA, but we'll talk about that later. In the 1970s, Father Ernetti took a boat ride, and he happened to be on the boat with another priest. They got to Gavin, and Father Ernetti spilled the beans about the chronovisor. He said it was very real how he had went back in time, and he had witnessed the crucifixion of Christ. He had witnessed the last few days of Christ. He had witnessed the final supper. He had witnessed the fall of Sodom and Gomorrah. Very heavy claims, right? Father Ernetti had proof though. He provided the blueprints for it and told him exactly how it worked. Now reportedly, this device had several antennas that would pick up on light and sound waves throughout multiple frequencies to translate these frequencies into a screen that would show a past event, a present event, or a future event. Now, in the wrong hands, think about how powerful that could be. You can witness anybody at any time at any point. Now, of course, this was all supposed to be a secret because seeing anybody you want at any point in time is pretty dangerous in the wrong hands. So Vatican told Father Ernetti and everyone else involved, do not speak of this. It took Father Ernetti 10 years before he had this boat conversation to any tell anyone about it. And then in 1988, the Vatican released a decree stating anyone found to be using a device like the chronovisor would be excommunicated from the church. 2002, the man that took the boat ride with Father Ernetti released a tell-all book about the chronovisor and went to his deathbed believing in the chronovisor. Now we all know the Vatican has their chamber of secrets. The rumor is that this is locked in the chamber of secrets. I do kind of believe in the chronovisor. 
This kind of aligns up with my way of thinking of time travel. I do not believe that we can physically travel back in time, but we can see the past through light waves. If we just had the technology to read the light waves, travel them, and go back through time with those light rays. As hard to believe as it sounds, that actually makes sense to me. I've heard of the chronovisor and that's kind of where that idea of time travel has come from me is we cannot physically travel to the past, but we can see the past. We cannot physically travel to the future, and I do not think that we can see the future. That's my theory. Let me know what you guys think about it. All right. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end it here. As always, if you find any of these clips interesting, links are in the description down below. I changed it up a little bit in the descriptions because I never really put a, a title or a timestamp to the clips in reference to what we're watching on this video. But I did put a title to each clip above the link, so it's easier to tell what the video is that you're clicking on. Again, I'm really sorry that I've been a little nasally and congested. I've, I'm sick with some kind of head cold. I can barely hear out of my ears. Everything's so stuffy and I'm super congested into the throat. I, I'm coughing like crazy and I have a horrible wheeze. But nonetheless, with that being said, have a good day.